Yo, yo! It's your boy Jabo back with another tutorial. This time we're going to take a look at how I painted these Boston Bruins vans from this design concept all the way to this completed product you see here. So the first thing we need to take a look at is how to prep these bad boys. First, I'm going to mask off the soles and the inside of the shoes. And for that, I use a roll of paper pre-mask, one inch tape, quarter inch tape, and an X-Acto blade. I cover up everything below the upper seam of the shoe. I didn't really worry about the insoles though, because I figured they were black, so if any overspray got on them, you wouldn't really see it. Next, I take a quarter inch tape and I carefully run a line along the edge of the soles. I'd say here it's more important to under mask rather than over mask. You don't want to leave a white edge of canvas covered up. You'll really notice it when the design is done. Then I use my one inch tape to cover up the rest of the midsoles. For the very bottom of the shoes, I take paper pre-mask, sticky side up. Then I put the shoe down on that and cut around it with my X-Acto knife. I then use the one inch tape to stick that down and fill in the gap. I take a small strip of one inch tape, wrap it around the van's tag. I use my nail to press the tape to itself above the tag and then I cut off a bunch of the excess tape. So guys, I have these eyelet covers. If you're interested in these, hit me up because I actually have a ton of these and can sell them. If you're interested, hit me up with a message or maybe I'll try and sell them on my Etsy or something and I'll put a link there. But I take these and I cover up all of the lace holes or the eyelets and then I use my heat gun to soften the vinyl and press them down. They form really snugly around the eyelet. And just like a fancy cooking show, boom, I've got one shoe here already done and hot from the oven. Sometimes I find there can be a lot of loose lint on these shoes, so I like to take a bit of two inch masking tape or even duct tape works really well and just place it over top of the shoes, pulling off all the extra lint and fibers that might be on there. The shoes are now prepped and ready to go, but before we move on to paint, first we are going to have to deal with vinyl. So, when I work out my digital design, I also build my vector files at the same time. That unfortunately is a pretty involved process that I'm going to have to cover in an entirely separate video. I know I'm always saying that, but it's eventually going to come true, just bear with me. So for this design, I had to build the Bruins logo, this bear face off of Andy Moog's goalie mask, the number 35. Moog's number, the name Moog, a couple of three leaf clovers, and some smaller Bruins logos. And to transfer those all onto the shoe, I'm going to use some clear vinyl transfer tape. Working on my cutting mat, I grab an X-Acto blade and I'm going to start to weed out some of my vinyls. The first ones I'm going to work on are the small Bruins logos. I take my X-Acto blade and I carefully pull out all the line work. You need to pull out the area that you are going to be painting and leave the background as a mask. In this case, I do not need to save what I weed out, so I'll just pull it out and discard it. I do the same for the clover, but for the lettering and the number, the stroke is white, so I'm going to leave the stroke and the inside of the lettering, but peel my background. For the Bear and the Bruins logo, they both have multiple colors, so I'm going to just leave all of the vinyl in, and that way I'll be able to weed vinyl and replace it as I paint. So now I'm going to cover all of the vinyls in clear vinyl transfer tape. This allows me to pull the vinyl off the vinyl backing, then put it on the shoe, then pull the transfer tape off, leaving just the vinyl behind. For the brand of vinyl and vinyl transfer tape that I use, guys, I'll put some links in the description of the video. But for vinyl, I generally just use any cheap outdoor vinyl. Okay, so it's time to place the vinyls and it's pretty hard to see what's going on here. So I just sort of trace out some of the details of the bear's face and give myself a center line so that I know where I'm at when I'm placing the vinyl. 
I took my squeegee and give the vinyl a little once over before removing the backing. So it's a little bit tricky to put a flat piece of vinyl on a curved surface like a shoe, but lucky the outdoor vinyl is actually pretty flexible, so it's got a bit of give to it. I find if I hold the transfer tape down on itself and pull it back very tightly, it is, there's less chance of the vinyl lifting up. And I just pull it back very carefully, making sure I'm not pulling any vinyl up with it. I'll just use my finger or a blade to push down the vinyl as I'm pulling the backing off, make sure it doesn't lift up with it. Then I take a heat gun to it and you can see it really softens up the vinyl and I'll press it into all the grooves and make sure it fits the shoe really well. And I'll do all that exact same stuff now for the other shoe. And next might as well put on the Bruins logo. So generally vinyl is meant to be put on a flat smooth surface so it doesn't stick overly great to canvas shoes. So you do have to work it a little bit like I was saying, but it is manageable. And I was able to make life a little bit easier on this side by cutting off the excess material that's not going to be sticking to the shoe. That just makes peeling off the transfer tape that much easier. So in my design there is a white stripe that goes around the heel. So I'm just going to put that on with a little bit of 1 8 inch masking tape. I feel like it's a good idea to put down all the vinyl and tape over anything that's going to stay white before I add any paint. I bring the vinyl behind the Vans tags, add the letter and number to the back of the heel, and all the vinyl that needs to be placed for now is down. So we can move on to mixing colors. So when I paint shoes guys, I use Angelus paints mixed with Golden GAC 900, a fabric additive. For these Bruin shoes, I'm only going to be using the colors white, black, caramel, yellow, and red. Mixed one to one with the GAC 900 and I'll reduce that with water. And I do all my color mixing in these plastic shot glasses I get from a dollar store. Sometimes I find if the paint is quite old, it might be wise to strain it. So I use these little strainers and what I do to make it more manageable is just cut down the size of them. If you're airbrushing and your airbrush keeps getting clogged, it may be because there are small chunks of dry paint in it. So straining I find is a nice way to avoid this. I'll pull my design a little closer so I can use it for reference for mixing my colors. But before I do that, I want to mix all my paints so they are airbrushable. Alright guys, so here is my system for mixing paint for airbrushing. I'll take my paint, here I've got my Angelus White, and I'll pour that into my container. If I'm just doing a small amount, I'll only try and fill in half of the bottom of the container. That way I can top it up with the GAC 900 and I'll have a nice one-to-one. -one. But all that's really important is that you have a rough one-to-one -one mixture. The Golden GAC 900 is just a fabric additive. If you're going to be spraying on textiles like canvas or a shirt or something like that, you're going to want to one-to-one -one mix it with a fabric additive. And just for the sake of flow through the airbrush, I like to add a little bit of water. You can reduce by feel later, but I just generally give a little bit of a splash to each of my colors. And I just use a regular popsicle stick and I mix that bad boy up. And before I get into mixing or matching any colors, I am just going to do that to all of the rest of my colors so that they are ready to go. Once I have all the colors ready to spray, I'm going to mix them together to create all the colors I need to make a fade that goes from white all the way to caramel. To do this I simply take another cup and place it in between the white and yellow and the yellow and the caramel and then mix the colors back and forth to create that step in between each color. Just by using my eye and looking at the reference I decide to pale out the colors a little bit and I do this by adding some more white, a little bit more back and forth mixing just to get nice gradual color steps. Since my first color step isn't actually white, I decide I need one more color, so I mix up a little bit more white to create a real pale banana yellow color. So seems like our colors are all mixed up and ready to go, but first I am going to play it safe and strain them. 
find if I work from light to dark, I can use one strainer for all of my yellowish color steps. I also find when switching colors, if I run a little water through the strainer, I can clean it out and move on to use the strainer for different colors. So I was able to strain all of these colors using only two paint strainers. Well, that was a lot of setup, guys, but finally it is time to paint the shoes. The airbrush I'm using is an Iwata Revolution CR. I'll also be using my X-Acto blade to pull on and off vinyls. And I'm going to use a Sharpie to mark the sections that have already been painted. Now none of this has been painted yet, but I'm also going to go ahead and mark all the areas that are going to stay white. So I decide to start with the bare face, and a lot of times I like to start with the smallest sections. That way there's the least amount of vinyl removal and put back. And definitely the smallest section in the bare face is the red section, which is the gums. So I am a two coat guy, so I like to spray down one section, hit it with my heat gun, and then give another coat. I then hit it with the heat gun once more to dry it enough to put the vinyl back on. I try and be really careful and line up the vinyl as nice as I can, but I find painting with canvas is pretty nice that the paint kind of soaks into the material and I find I don't get a lot of white over mask lines by the time I'm done. So I'm unmasking the vinyl now for the yellow sections, but I find it's being really annoying and I'm thinking it's gonna be a lot of work to pull all these off and put them back in place. So I revise my plan and I decide to take off all of the vinyl for the bear's face. That way I can spray the yellow base coat down, cover up what's yellow, and then I will be able to add the black after that. And lucky for me, I'm the kind of guy that likes to cut doubles of all my vinyls just in case I make a mistake. But there's still a little bit of extra work because now I have to weed everything except for what will cover the yellow. This is extra work now, but had I thought of this beforehand, this would already be done. So now with these pieces ready, I can bring the shoes back in and I wanna line the vinyls up with the outline of the vinyl that's still there and I left a bit of the mouth of the bear for a reference. And again, because of the curved shape of the shoe, it might not line up exactly perfectly, so you just kinda gotta finesse it a little bit. I like to take my blade and move the vinyls around and line everything up nicely. Once the red and the yellow are both covered, the white has been covered up as well, this bare face is actually done, so I'll remove the rest of the vinyl and the black will be ready to spray. But we're not going to spray the black just yet, so we will move on to the Bruins logos. So my idea here is that I'm going to take off all of the yellow sections as I'm still working within that color. In fact, I'm going to take off all of the yellow sections within the vinyl for the entire shoe and spray them all, then cover them up. Once all the yellow sections are completed, it then makes sense to move on to a different color step. I lay some tape down to block over spray and I start spraying in the yellow sections. As you see in the reference here, there is a small yellow stripe on the back of the heel. So I just sort of freely spray that in. The black is gonna be able to cover the yellow, so I don't really worry about where that is and just spray beyond where I know the tape is gonna go. After two coats of yellow, hitting it with the heat gun after each coat, I can mark all my vinyls with a Sharpie and then recover up all these completed sections. And I take some 1 8 inch masking tape and run that stripe on the back of the heel. Sometimes there'll be small gaps in between the vinyls. I like to take little pieces of tape and cover up those gaps. That way no overspray can get in. I cover up the inside of this yellow section that the vinyls couldn't cover. And then I'm going to move on to my next section which is painting a fade. My fade here consists of four different yellows. The first is a very light, almost banana yellow. This is mostly white with just a tiny little bit of yellow. The second I'll call a light yellow. This is probably a half and half white and yellow. The third color is pretty much just straight up yellow. And the fourth color is pretty much straight up caramel. So to start this fade, I'm going to put the banana yellow down on the front of the fade section. I'm gonna to go to about the halfway point of the shoe. This is gonna line up past where the second color goes. 
and allow me enough room to bring the fade back in. And as always, two coats, heat gun, and now we'll bring in the light yellow. What I like to do is solid fill in the section past where I know I want this color to go. And when I have that section solidly filled in, I can then haze the color lightly into the previous color section and fade and blend the two colors together. I continue that on doing the same thing with the yellow and eventually into that caramel color. Doing two coats kind of helps as well make the blend look a little bit more natural. So you solid fill in an area, blend out the fade, hit it with the heat gun and then you do it again and you can kind of drag that fade a little further and make the blend look a little bit more natural. And a lot of times when I do fades I like to take the very last color for just the very end, just the very tip of it gets a little bit darker and that's what I do here with this caramel color. So this is a pretty quick breeze through on how I do a fade. I'm definitely considering doing an entire video on a very in-depth how to do a fade, maybe taking an entire shoe and fading it from front to back. If that's something you guys would be interested in, uh, let me know. And with the fade looking good, I'm going to take that caramel color and do a solid fill in the tongue. Same system as always, one coat, heat gun, second coat, heat gun. All right, so now we're gonna have a little fun and we are gonna take some of these little Boston Bruins logos that we've got and stick them onto our fade. If we just sort of randomly place them and solid fill them in, they'll give sort of a holographic effect blending in and out of the fade. And I do that to the inside of both of the shoes because on the outside has the large Bruins logo in full color. And as a special request from the customer, they wanted a small clover somewhere on the shoe. So here's a good spot as any, and we will plop a couple of those bad boys on and fill them in with black. And that is the first tiny bit of black paint to touch the shoe, but there is about to be a lot more. In fact, we're gonna spray the black on the entire shoe all at once. But first, I must ready the shoe by masking off all of the other sections that do not go black and unmasking everything that does. So if we take another look at the design here, you will see that the top seam or edge of the shoe is going to actually go black. So I need to go around and clean up all the vinyl so that nothing is sticking onto that seam. I find a good thing to do here is to, to cut the vinyl a little bit long and then I can actually tuck it underneath the seam. So with all of that done, I can now start to mask off all the fade sections. I do this all just with masking tape. It's actually uh, quite tedious, but I find if I'm very careful with it now and get everything covered up really well, then I don't have to be careful when spraying the black, which it is finally time for. So when I'm spraying the black here, what I'm kind of doing is jumping from one shoe to the other, doing one section at a time. So I kind of start with the bare area, spray one shoe, hit it with the heat gun, jump to the other shoe, spray the same section, and just kind of like two coat each area before moving on to the next. It just allows me to work the area and dry it before moving on. And I continue to do that till I've got the entire shoe two coated and looking nice and solid black. And just like that, we are ready for unmasking and touch ups. Unmasking has got to be about my favorite part and pretty much as simple as it seems. I like to use my X Acto blade, thumb, and index finger and carefully pull the little vinyl pieces off and continue doing that until the entire shoe is unmasked. Just for good measure and to make sure everything is good and dry, I do a couple of passes with the heat gun. So even though it's not on the design, I decide to add a stroke around the edge of the bear. This is just to help separate the bear's head from the light yellow in the fade. I think it needs to pop a little bit more. And I decide to just do this with a brush. When I'm brushing like this, I still use my mixed and reduced paint. Uh, this is so that the paint sort of soaks into the fabric rather than sitting on top. And just like I do when I'm airbrushing, I hit it with the heat gun and give it a second coat. I also want to look over the shoe and see if there's any small slivers that got missed with paint and I can touch them up with the brush as well. 
And since that seems to be all looking good, we can now finally fully unmask by taking the tape off of the tag, the midsoles, and the inside. And to take off these handy eyelet covers of mine, I like to just take the back of a brush and poke through the middle of the hole and that just pops them out nice and easy. When unmasking the midsoles, you might find a little bit of overspray snuck in there. I like to take a little bit of acetone or base coat reducer and just clean that off. And for the areas that were even tougher than that, I just took some straight Angelus black without the gack in it and brushed those touch-ups in. I do this for both shoes and I also noticed a little bit of overmasking caused a thin white sliver on the very toe. So I also touch that up. Okay guys, these shoes are done, but they kind of aren't. You have a couple of options in finishing these shoes. If you were going to put a finish on it, I would use Angelus Matte Finish. But here I didn't actually do that. Because I used a fabric additive, what you need to do now is heat set the paint to the fabric. And what I do is either with a dryer rack or hanging the shoes from the door with laces, I put them in the dryer. I let it run a couple of full cycles on high. I believe they recommend 80 to 90 minutes. Well, that is the vid, guys. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you learned something. Uh, if you did, of course, like, comment, subscribe, all those things. But I'd also like to take this moment to do a special thank you to David Condon, who contacted me and wanted to make a rather sizable donation to my PayPal. And that also got me thinking, guys, I don't have a Patreon or anything like that. Uh, but if you learned anything from these videos and you would like to donate to the cause, because I do put a lot of time into them. Again, they're here. They're free. I'm happy to do them. I'm happy to put this information out there. But if you learned something from them and you want to donate something to me, that would be very appreciated. Just go to PayPal dot me slash jbo airbrush and i will put the link in the description of the video again guys i'm putting it out there you don't have to uh happy to do it but it is a lot of work so it definitely made me uh feel great and well appreciated so thanks again david for that and uh anyone else if you want to do so that's great if not there's the vid thanks so much guys and i'll see you in the next one peace